Hi guys, it's Laurie. It is Saturday night. It is about 8 o'clock and I know I'm not usually up here at night. I don't usually, usually, I don't usually video for you at night, but I'm having a little bit of my frou-frou coffee and so I'm a little bit awake. <laughs> so, and I'm not in the mood for TV or anything. So I thought I'd come up here. There's a few things I was going to tell you about. Um, I shouldn't drink coffee at 8 o'clock. And it's not full-fledged coffee. It's, I don't know. Well, it's mostly coffee in here. And some cream. And Anyway, not a good idea. But it's Saturday, so I'm fudging a little bit. And I'm just going to enjoy it because I want to. Um, what you have in front of you here is the fabric quarters, the fat quarters that I told you about that I got. Now, if you saw the video from Friday, our Friday chat video, I told you about the quilt store that I went to and all the fat quarters. And what I came away with out of that whole store was this pile. Let me uh, zoom out a little bit so you can see better. And... I thought I'd just show you some of the colors. I'll, I'll come a little closer now that you've seen the stack. Um, I won't undo all of them because I know that it'll take forever, but I wanted to show you some of the colors that I got. And I don't know what, you know, it's really, can't do it justice. Look at that. Oh, does that, not, does that not make your heart just flutter? There are not many things that make my heart flutter. Caffeine. <laughs> um, fabric. <laughs> art. I won't name everything, but this is not a lot. And the lighting in here is a little bit different because it is nighttime. Hey guys, a minute ago I had a pile of rolled fat quarters here when I started the video, but then I realized that I didn't have two of my main lights on. And that the fabrics I showed you, you might not have seen the colors properly. So I thought I would come back at the end of the video, show you the, the fabric colors really quick, and then put it in the front of the video. So it's kind of a redo. Um, for those of, you, those of you who are interested in all these rolls that I enrolled, and I had a mess on the table, and y'all missed it. You missed everything. Okay, um, the, the light's better now that I have these lamps on. Well, not lamps, but they're odd lights. Anyway, this is one of the fat quarters. And... I had a bunch of stuff I was telling you about all of them, but I'm not gonna do I'm not gonna go through that again. It's getting late. The coffee I just drank is jacking me up, so <laughs> I'm going to try to keep it toned down. I thought that was retro, I like that. And I have some ideas of what I want to do with all this. Love batiks. Very pretty. And this is a bunch of uh, piano um, music. Music words. Brahms and um, Adante and Fortissimo and I don't know. Bunch of bunch of words. <laughs> Thought that was pretty. Love this one. That's gorgeous. And this has words like color, paisley, um, embroidery, patchwork lads and it has green pink red and all the colors on there thought that was really pretty it's got a pheasant or something on this side let's see there That was kind of retro. Thought that was really pretty. Of course, I thought all of them were pretty, or I went about them. And this, these two are. This is like a Aztec. I got these to go together because I thought they looked good together. Dragonflies. Fruits. Dots. Polka dots. 
I thought this was really cute. And some of this stuff I won't use for what I... I'll use it all for different things because um, some of it will be for art journaling, uh, maybe book covers, and some is going to be for dolls. But I don't know what this will be for. It's got a cat, and I didn't know the sunshine was on it until I just unwrapped it a few minutes ago. All these were the ties around it like they were all rolled like this and I didn't unwrap this one because there's two of them so you already saw one I am a sucker for fabric I ugh. the fabric I used to have you would not believe and I won't even tell you why I had it. I won't. I won't go into that. I won't tell you why I don't have it anymore. <laughs> it's just too long a story. But maybe one day. But um, I still have a lot of fabric, and I still sucker for it. It's a boutique, I think, also. Okay. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to let you see it in better light if you were interested. And if you're not, you can fast forward and um, go on to the next stuff that I was going to tell you about. Let me move this out of the way. There's a couple things I want to show you. Um, I got these, I, I placed an order with scrapbook.com, and the main reason I placed it was because I wanted the envelope punch board, which is here, and I'll be making some envelopes, but, well, there you go, and y'all know what this looks like, but I just wanted a, a punch board that would make it easy to make envelopes, and I have a reason for that, but, um, the other reason I wanted to order from them was I wanted this card punch. It's a 3 by 4 card punch. This is the one with the rounded corners. They have a square one also. or Well, it's not square, but the edges are not rounded. They're pointed. And I thought, well, most of the time I'm going to round my corners anyway, so I just went ahead and got the round one to start. And you unlock it here. And the lid, this pops up, and then this is a magnetized lid. And you set your photo or whatever you want to do here. Then you put your magnet. See, it's really, really sturdy. Put your your lid on, and you can adjust it to put your photo wherever you want to cut it, so you can see through the window. And then you punch. Well. That's great for photos, but the reason I wanted it, it was for art pieces and also to take scrapbook paper and to create cards for journals. So that's going to come in handy. And But the other thing I got that I really wanted to play with, and this is what I really want to show you guys, it's called Snap Studio. Snap Photo Crops. Photo Crops. And there's the, it comes in a cellophane packaging. Uh, I don't know if you can see it very well or not in this light, but that's that. And if you have questions, I'm happy to answer them. But it's these plastic sheets, and they're different sizes. There's a, a um, let's see, let's go back to the beginning. There's a two by two called simple stories and there's a three by three a three by four a four by four and a four by six and this is for photos like if you have a photo of a group of people or something with a person in it and you want to zero in on the person and you want it a certain size for your scrapbooking or your journaling or whatever you pick the size you want and you can lay it down and pick out the subject and line it up and then cut it out well you take it off the ring, make it easier. Let's do that. But I took out a sample photo. This is a photo of um, a piece of art that I did in a, a journal of mine. And it's three dimensional, so you really can't tell. But anyway, um, and this is just a sample. If I wanted to just pull out these flowers, for instance, I could take my two by two and I could lay it on top. And you can see through it. And I could line it up where I wanted it. I wonder if this light would help. 
I haven't had any of the lights on. Let's let that adjust for a minute. Okay. Um, you line it up on your picture. My nail's just totally shot. I bent it backwards and I had to cut it off. This is not what I would do. This is not the right size, but this is just an example. And you could lay it down on your on your mat and you could trace around it and then cut or you in or um, use your paper cutter tool or you could just take your scissors and cut around the square but I thought that was cool so that's good for photos but the main reason I bought it wasn't for photos because I do I deal more with art I got it for like when I have an art piece and I want to cut it into sections and I want to use a section for something let's say for example I just want to use this main flower here and maybe want to get a little piece of the leaf or something I would decide okay I want a three by three and I would lay it on here and line it where I want it. I've got the whole flower. I've got a part of the leaf and a part of the other flower. So I can imagine it cut down to three by three. And I'd either trace it and cut it. And I've even got a little of the stamp. And I would just cut it out with my scissors. So I thought these were really cool. These will come in really handy for art. That's the main thing that I wanted to show you. What I was really going to do tonight was get started on my ATCs for the swap for Crazy Island Family. And I'm going to video it, but I'm not going to share with you the video or what they look like until after they've been sent and after the 16th when everybody has received theirs and um, the swap's over. So, oh, there's one more thing I want to show you. Hey guys, one more quick video tonight. I wanted to show you how this envelope punch board worked. Um, and what you can do with it. I've only done one little thing with it and this is the little card I created and I created one of the little punches from the punch I just showed you in another video to go in um, using this. But you can, you know, you can cut these out. You don't have to have the punch to do this. Um, if you have this punch board though, it makes it faster. Um, all you do, I thought this was really cute, all you do is, um, you look on your, your punch board, oh, man, I am so wired on coffee, oh, I'm just wired, it was a bad mistake, I shouldn't have done that, I told you in the previous video, if I posted it, that I had a frou-frou coffee tonight, and it was 8 o'clock when I had it, and that's not a good idea, so, I'm wired. <laughs> okay. You find the card size that you want to make. And the reason I chose the... Uh, what size is that? 3 by 5 is because that's what this punch is. A 3 by 5 punch. Let me make sure of that. Hold on. No. It's a 3 by 4. This is a 3 by 4 punch. So I found card size, 3 by 4 right here, and I looked over here. This is the paper size that you're supposed to use to create your envelope, a 6 by 6. And I had some 6 by 6 pads, so I just took some paper out of that. So it's already pre-cut, but what you would normally do is take whatever paper you have and cut it down to a 6 by 6 size. And the score line is 2 and 5 eighths. That's the start. And what I will do is I will set my paper down and find the 2 and 5 eighths mark right there. And I'll punch, and then I will score. And I should have done it on the other side because it's probably easier to see. Well, I didn't. So, and then you would turn it 90 degrees, and you will line this score up with this line right here. There's a little it's called a score guide right here. You'll line your score line with the score guide right there. And it may not be perfect because I'm wired <laughs> because I can't see the line very well. It's just not a good paper for this. I should have done it on the other side. It'd probably be easier to see. Anyway, um, lines up there. Okay, and then I will punch again and I will score again. Turn it 90 degrees and line this up again, the score line, 
Hope it's lined up. Punch again. Score. Turn it 90 degrees. Line it up one more time. Make sure. Where did it go? It's so hard to see on this. That right there. We'll just guess. Let's hope for the best. Punch. And score. I think I'm a little off, but that's okay. And then you're going to, what do they call it? Um, reverse punch on this side to create the round edges. I love this little thing. Once I get the hang of it, this is only the second one I've done, so I'm, I'm not very good at it yet. But once I get the hang of it, I'm going to love it. Um, and then you fold and glue. And you fold your edges in. And I'm already off, I can tell a little bit, but that's okay, it'll still work. And I will glue these down to this paper here. Now, I don't like this little tabby thing up here, so I'm going to cut that off. And the last one I did, I just cut it here like this. Um, I may just try it this one. Let me just cut it off this way and see if it works. May have messed up. Nose. Nope, that worked. That worked fine. Still a little bit showing, but that's okay. I'll know to cut more next time. And let's glue my edges here. And I'm not going to do a you know, real detailed job because I'm just trying to show you how this works and I'm going to do this and I'm going to go downstairs because I shouldn't be wielding scissors or anything right now to be honest with you. <laughs> Got glue all over me. And then you'll come back if you have any spots like this here I'd want to put a dab of glue underneath there. And wipe off the excess. I'm going to hold it a minute, you know, and let it seal. Be careful, don't put glue any place where it's going to touch the inside of your card. And if you use double-sided paper, that's even better because then your inside's all decorated. But in this case, this is just samples I'm making, so I'm not really concerned about that. Um, and then what I did was I set my card aside, and I had another piece of paper here that um, matched it. And I took this punch and I just cut I think you're a little bit too close to me. Wow, the magnet's really good. Okay, and I cut the three by four card. Is it three by four? I think it is. And it fits in there perfectly. Oops. Okay. And, you know, you can mail these if you want to. The way I decorated this, I wouldn't be able to, well, I wouldn't be able to mail it because I couldn't write anything on here. But you could put like this on here and leave this off, put your address and your stamp up here and mail this like this. I feel like when you mail stuff this small, it might get lost. <laughs> So I don't mail anything this small, but you know, you could put this in an art journal page or make a bunch of these little ones and stick it in, um, I use it for ATC holders or something. They have one that's two and a half by three and a three by three. So, you know, that would work. But anyway, for now, what I'm going to do is I just took some stuff I had lying around that is old, I want to use up, 
and I'm not even distressing the edges or anything, which is what I would normally do because I'm kind of just wanting to show you how this works, but um, just glue a little bit of this down. I've had these forever, and I'm just trying to use up stuff I have. I could put it straight up and down, or I could go at an angle, but I think on this one I'll just go up straight up and down. And I'm not going to measure, I'm just going to eyeball it. And then I had some of these flowers, real pale flowers, so it didn't fight with the card. And I think I'm going to use one of these. Um, I think this blue one looks pretty. It's a sticker. I just tried to rip it. But... And do I want the big end in here or out here? I think I want it out here like this. take one of these and let's see which one looks the best. Dreams, love, believe, happy, wish, joy, kind. Kind matches the card in here. But I don't really want to use it. So does love, but it's I like hope. Smile, joy, kind, you. I'm just going to go with my instinct. Hope is the one I like the best. And you can distress the edges. I can come back later and do it, but I'm just going to center it kind of on top of the flower. Now, do I want it? No. You know, I'm going to center it over here. Just like this. Just like that. There you go. Another little cute card. And you can, um, you know, decorate these or whatever if you want to. Use double-sided cardstock if you want to. Whatever you want to do. But I thought I'd just give you a quick glimpse at what you can do with this little gizmo thingy here. I got it at scrapbook.com. It was on sale when I bought it. I don't know if it's still on sale. But I had been looking for it at Michael's because they used to carry it. And I had a birthday gift card given to me in November, and I was going to buy this with that. But I haven't been able to find it, so I still have my gift card that I haven't even spent, because I can't find anything I want bad enough um, that I wouldn't normally buy for myself. But I really wanted this, so I went ahead and ordered it from scrapbook.com. So check it out if you want to. Make some cutesy little cards, and have a good night. I'm going to go wind down from this coffee. I need water, and what else do I need? something to calm me down. Maybe right around the block. <laughs> All right. I hope you guys have a great weekend, the rest of the weekend. It is Saturday night, and I will see you tomorrow or the next day. Um, I'll probably be distressing the edge of this as a, uh, I'll probably be distressing the edges of these just because I think it'll look better. Anyway, all right, see you guys later. Bye. One more thing. I keep forgetting to tell you guys, and I meant to tell you Friday in our Friday chat, the Gingins. Usually I get them in a box, but uh, I haven't had the box, a bigger box, so I've been getting them in the bag. But they're the same as the ones that I had in the box. Um, the regular ones are my favorite. You know that already. We've already discussed all that. I told you I was going to try a new flavor. I tried the spicy apple. They are very good. So if you like the Gingins and you are interested in trying a new flavor, spicy apple is really good. Thought I'd let you know. Give those a try. It says 20 calories per piece. So eat one and then go up and down your stairs or run around your yard around, you know, a couple times and burn off the 20 calories. <laughs> All right, see ya.